Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome to another episode of Teach Gen Tech. Yet, day one of a new series that we are doing with Josh. Josh, who are you? What do you do? What series are we doing? Great questions. Hi, everyone. I'm Josh, Josh Goldberg. I am a TypeScript person. Um, I'm not on the team, but I uh, authored and through O'Reilly released a learning TypeScript book. I'm also a maintainer on TypeScript ESLint, which is the tooling that lets you run ESLint on TypeScript code. The series we're going to be going through is uh, Teach Gen Tech, the Learning TypeScript edition, where we'll go through the Learning TypeScript book. Jen will explore TypeScript and all its fun and quirks, and we're going to have a great time. And I hope you all will, too. Yay. Yeah. Yes. And so for everyone tuning in or watching this like post, we are just today is just setting up like what are we talking about? How can you follow along? Because this is definitely for all of us to be a part of, not just me getting value out of it, but also how to go through the book. And I grabbed the book today and I've started going through it and everything. And I'm like, how did I already make it messy? Like, I don't even know. Like, it's like, and I'm like the bite, it's not shiny and new anymore is basically what I'm saying. I'm like, I've used it. I've used it. And for those who have been following my journey, I am very, very excited because I've been working on this Tweety tag app thing in Prisma and they use TypeScript and it's been a lot of Googling, a lot of Googling which I feel like is my entire coding experience, but uh, I'm excited for this. So thank you. Thank you. And what up, homie? It's like one of my favorite things to say when homie joins the streams. One of my faves as well. Yay. Hi. So yes, I listen to, is it called preface or preface? Like, which is the proper way? You brought this up pre-stream. And I, I was wondering, I truly don't know. I, my guess, and this is not informed, is that you to preface is a word and the preface is also a noun, but I've heard that you could preface something and I don't know. It's a great question. All right. Maybe I'll Google this later. And I realized without thinking about it, getting ready for the stream today, that I'm just going to blend in with my background. It's okay. There's just going to be floating hands. It's Halloween. It'll be great. Um, I really liked it because it like set up a, why you got into it. And then also that it's going to be broken down more than like having the assumption that people know all about this already. So I'm going to see if I like recap this well, and you can let me know of, all right. So, Oh, I just want to skip forward. Okay. Let me think about this. How did you get into this? I'll just ask you and then uh, I can wait and skip forward. Sure. Um, how did I get into TypeScript as a yeah. whole? Um, yeah, I really like JavaScript. I actually learned first Java in high school and then C++ in college. I, I was a four-year CS degree. And those languages are fun, but I really like the, the speed and rapidness of doing things on the web. I like how you can slap some, in my case, terrible code onto an HTML page, maybe add some CSS or JavaScript, and it just works. And you can publish it on a website. So my first big project using those fun ideas of just getting it out there was a remake of Mario called Full Screen Mario that went viral, uh, got taken down by Nintendo, and was, I'm proud to say, the worst project code I've ever written. It was like a couple dozen, or sorry, about a dozen files with hundreds of global variables, all sorts of bugs all over the place. It was terrible. Oh, so people on the internet told me, hey, you should look into things like ESLint, which is a linter. It looks at your code and complains about it for you. And then later on, I got into TypeScript because TypeScript is like the ultimate linter. It mm -hmm. both finds bugs in your code for you and lets you describe how your code is supposed to run, which then in turn tells TypeScript more about your code and makes it easier for you to read your things that you wrote six months ago and have completely forgotten about since. So I'd say through pain and, and tribulations have I gotten into TypeScript. Yes, yes. And there is something, and I love this because it's always like uh, how you explain like, hey, what did you write like a while ago? And I love this because it's literally on everything. But one of my um, favorite parts of the preface, we'll go with that for now, is you were like, nah, I don't like types or JavaScript. And then you did your project and you were like, yes, this is amazing. 
So I loved that. Um, my other favorite part, and this is something that I feel like, especially with Teach Gen Tech, I have gone from knowing, like, people just throw projects at me, which I love. This is how I learn. This is why I learned it this way. This is why Teach Gen Tech is the thing. I do not do very well going through step by step normally, but it's also really, really useful to go step by step. There's a reason. There's a reason, y'all. And the reason uh, that I'm looking for. Ah. And yes, y'all, we will be having a information on how you can get yourself a book so you can take notes and things because I only listen to it. Um, I use an app called Natural Reader to be able to take pictures or read books. Um, and I use that, but now I have my pen. Of, I really like that TypeScript is four things. Programming language, type checker, compiler, and language service. And I was like, I didn't know what a compiler was. <laughs> like I've he heard people explain it, but... Uh, I was like, a program that runs a the type checker reports any issues and then outputs equivalent JavaScript code. And I was like, what? And that's, I was like mind blown that it was actually like written out. So that's a big thing that I'm really enjoying about just barely getting into the book. So, and first off, hi, Ben. Hi, uh, Ben. Yay. <laughs> what? As Four we're going through this book, like, we can definitely go through like the examples of like chapter by chapter because y'all I'm not going to lie. It actually is really helpful because it's like you put the index in the chapter instead of like people having to go to the back and look at the index of everything. Okay. I'm totally just going to awkwardly show like, it's like, Hey, this is chapter one. This is what you'll learn in it. And yeah. Yeah. O'Reilly actually has some pretty nifty automations. Like that's all automatically generated from the headings. What? Y'all, I, I want I'm showing you more because I get really excited about this because I'm like, it like organized the way my brain wanted to look at things instead of what I struggle with with most books. Um Yay. How if you're telling someone about TypeScript for the first time, do and uh, do they need to know JavaScript beforehand? That is a debate in the TypeScript community. Um, okay. There are some people who've had some successes teaching just TypeScript to someone who doesn't know JavaScript. Okay. I personally am in the camp that it is often and perhaps a majority of the time preferable that they know JavaScript first. And okay. I'll tell you what, um, I'm a really big proponent of the learn one major thing at a time strategy. The mm -hmm. idea that it's not easy to learn a bajillion things at once. Like a lot of people, when they start learning, say, programming, they learn um, like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all at the same time. So they have to learn three things, the concept of the markup language, styling those things, JavaScript, which is like a whole shebang. And I really don't like that. I think the brain works best when it can contextualize a solid single area of new knowledge against what it already knows. And if it needs to make new core knowledge, core memories, then it can do so you know, in an individual way for them. So I really like teaching the concept of type theory, like what is a type annotation, a type checker, those four things you were looking at on top of already knowing the core fundamentals of JavaScript. Because like, can you imagine teaching someone both like the, the more difficult parts of TypeScript, the less easy ones at the same time that they're learning about like scoping in JavaScript or this, like that's, those are both things that you really want to focus on. That does make sense. And I am, I'm curious about it because I, I feel like that's how it is for a lot of people. Yet at the same time, y'all, I'm doing the opposite of what Josh <laughs> suggests. In the fact that, like, yeah, um, in the fact that I'm like learning Python on Mondays, like we have learning with Laura on Mondays, which I absolutely love because, but that's how, and I've learned this about myself is I am very ADHD. I, if I don't have different buckets going at the same time, I'll disengage with something and I'll be like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm done with that. Where I will say comparing different languages, 
has helped learn more about JavaScript. While I've been learning Python, I've learned a ton more about JavaScript. While I'm building things, I learn more about like how I would do something in Python compared to JavaScript and why each is good or bad, the sure. pros and cons of them. And mm -hmm. I see that in the fact of y'all just all the for all the beautiful humans that are watching through this process is learning how you learn best and that is a difficult process yet um it's also like getting into coding and um <laughs> yes you are ben uh ben just said uh it's, it's ben i'm a beautiful human yes you are um and it's a lot of just like getting used to and finding things of ways of learning. Like I am not a learn by the book kind of person. I wish I was, but if I don't have someone that can say, Hey, Josh, how does this compare to Python on X, Y, Z? It's, it was actually harder for me to comprehend not knowing any of it from zero than being able to compare it to something, which is kind of the point that you had of, at the very beginning, having a solid understanding of something to be able to compare it to. So yeah. it's all different ways that we do things. So, but today is all TypeScript. I, I really like the idea, by the way, of, of jumping between things, say doing TypeScript on a Friday and Python on a Monday. Um, and I'm also perhaps slightly less ADHD, who knows? But uh, for, for me, my my thing is I can focus really intently on a short period of time on one thing and then I move on mm -hmm. to something else. Mm -hmm. So I really like learning one thing intently in that short time because if I have to learn four things or whatever, then it, it, yeah, it, can't okay. do it. it takes too long, I get distracted. But yeah, I strong plus one that, you know, the the understanding of how each person learns that that person gains over time is both incredibly difficult to gain quickly and also super valuable as you get it. So yes. yeah, I'm glad you learned about yourself. It's good. Yay. Yeah. It's been uh teach gen tech has really, it, a, first off, it sounds weird when I say my name in it, but I like really <laughs> associate it separately. Um, and homie says that they agree with your perspective. They like how you explain teaching uh, type theory as opposed to biting it off as a whole uh, TypeScript. The question is, where's your course? I wish I had the time to make one. First of all, thank you, homie Koda. Always good to see you again. Uh, second of all, I would love to make a course the way like Shande Person or Matt Pocock have, uh, both of which, by the way, I would recommend as course instructors if that's what you're looking for, both of whom. But yeah, I'm I'm trying to do this open source thing and promote the book and family stuff and friends stuff. And there are too many things in this world to do. So maybe eventually, but not this year. And to that point, that's a big reason that we're doing this is to kind of flesh out like to be able to help make the course later, because since we're going through all this stuff, it's going to be recorded for him to use. So yeah. you can literally use it whenever you want and also see what other people are struggling with. So uh, it's and we're here for questions. It's something that is making it a I don't want to say more uh, maybe. I'm, I'm missing words, but I'm going with accessible because since not everybody learns from the book, but we would all love Josh's knowledge and Josh loves to teach. Uh, that's why we're doing this. Yay. And also thanks to uh, Ben. It's weird that it's Ben and Ben in our chat and I'm totally digging it, but uh, Ben Myers for introducing us. Yeah, that's right. Ben, I for oh my god, thanks for reminding. Me. I forgot it was Ben. Ben is great though. Y'all should should subscribe to to Ben's stream. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, yes, homie, you do need to get this book. It is uh, homie and I are working on a project, and we're going to be using TypeScript. Ooh. Um, I'm nervous, but <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. Uh, it'll be great. So lots to learn there. If you were to break down the way the book works, how would you say overall, like what is it the book looks like and then how we break it down? Sure. There are three sections of the book. Um, and the first section is the most important, I think, to answer that question. The third section is fun, miscellaneous stuff that's useful, but you would not need to know to truly understand or to say that you know TypeScript. 
the second section of the book is how TypeScript works with each of the features of JavaScript that you would commonly use, functions, arrays, classes, et cetera. But the first section is where the real teaching, I think, happens, the, like, the core fundamental foundational stuff. Um, so that's split into, first, I explain in the book what TypeScript is, those four things you mentioned. It is a compiler, which takes job, a TypeScript syntax and outputs the equivalent JavaScript syntax, text to text. It is a, well, I guess we'll get into that later. And then I go over some of the syntax that TypeScript adds to, type, uh, to JavaScript, um, like the, these little type annotations, which help inform it. And I think actually okay. before that, and then also after that, I explain how TypeScript reasons about your JavaScript, how the type checker, the thing that looks at your code and understands it, takes a look at variables, um, the way that they're assigned, the way that they're changed, and lets you know when, say, you assign a string somewhere that's supposed to be a number or some other mistake. Does that kind of cool. answer the question you're looking for? It does. And then I do want to share this to share screen. And go to this screen. Yay. All right. So this is also something really cool. So this is the website. It is linked in the YouTube video and everything. Um, and I will go copy and paste that here in a second with everything from today. It's also something that each of these chapter, I think it's by chapter or is it by section that we're going to have projects to go through? It's by chapter, right? Yes, each chapter has a corresponding group of projects. Yeah, and it's going to be at learningtypescript.com. And this is pretty exciting because this is what uh, we went through earlier on when Josh joined us a while ago. And this is kind of what happens is people join and then they're like, hey, I want to come back. That was fun. So uh, we ran this and then uh, we ended up talking about it a lot more to see if I understood it at the moment. I totally don't remember what we did. But <laughs> I remember that it was really cool because I was like, oh, this is a way to con like I'm getting theory and I'm getting practice where that's something that I really struggle with. If somebody's talking theory, then I'm like, OK. Okay. Yeah. That did no. So I'm very excited that we will be going through these as well. And by we, I mean like me and the audience, uh, and show Josh <laughs> if we finally got it and ask him questions. She's going to be I'm here to help. I'm very excited about this. So definitely check out this website and get the book. We will be sharing, uh, ways to get the book too. Uh, probably by the next time we stream, it is, we are going to stream every other Friday. So this is, I will have a calendar out eventually. It will be a thing. It will be. I'm not sure when, but it will be. Is there things like, of course, like we can get the book, we can read through the book or, our, we can watch your live streams. We can also watch your YouTube. Or are there things that we should do outside of that to prep for going through this course with you? Good question. I would say my live streams might not be great prep material. Um, I live stream my work in open source, but it's a lot of stuff that deals with like TypeScript static analysis, which is kind of not great if you don't know TypeScript yet. Um, okay. So it, it's great if you just want background coding or if you're interested in that stuff once you've read the book. Um, I'd say it never hurts to read ahead or to take another course. I personally find that um, it, it often takes me like two to three different things, whether that thing is a video or a Codecademy tutorial or projects to understand something. So yeah, um, I, I'd say try reading ahead. Um, also, definitely it's useful to recap your JavaScript fundamentals. So knowing how functions work in JavaScript, like first class functions, storing them as variables. Um, classes, once we get to them, although I don't personally use those a lot in JavaScript, some hard architecture opinions over there. Uh, and then- I'm just like, gonna say this classes and I just have not clicked. Like I stopped <laughs> taking a LinkedIn course because like a lot of courses, like you have to finish X to be able to continue. I'm still stuck on classes. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so stuck on them, I, but it's not computing. So as a heads up, that might be um, something I get. 
I struggle sure. with when we go through that. Well, the classes chapter was one of the more difficult ones to write. And uh, I'd say if you don't understand it, classes and types you by the end of it, that's totally fine. Because if you don't use classes, it won't affect you at all. So yay. Yes. Yay. Cool. So we can <laughs> uh, also like tag those different things later on. I can put it in the YouTube video notes. Um, and yes, Ben, uh, you're, well, yes and no. Uh, he, he said um, that uh, accessibility appearances have been very theory so far. And I'm like, I don't know, Ben, that's a lot of them have been Let's see, the first one we actually were going through and uh, actually looked at colors and you showed me the contrast thing. So that one wasn't very theory. I'm trying to remember the second one. I think I'm mixing it up with the first one too. But this is why they are recorded because we might get messed up on them. <laughs> um, and yeah, today was honestly just to get us set up and go through this. Do you think we should start with chapter one today? Or do you think we should wait till everybody gets their time to get their books and set up on start on next time? I, I'm down to wait. Um, unless, if anyone has any particular questions they want to ask about TypeScript or personal anecdotes about when it or JavaScript has given them great joy or pain, would love to hear it. But yeah. I defer to you and the audience. My dog is uh, trying to talk to us. I don't know if she's like for continuing or or for, you know, waiting, but she is. Um... Oh, how fun is that? Um, sorry, uh, Ryan and uh, Homie have been setting up stream elements. So <laughs> they uh, that is actually really cool. Um, can you do the, for Josh's, do you go by Josh or Joshua? I feel like it's been, I keep going between the two. It's Josh. I, I put Joshua K. Goldberg because it's the only one that's been consistently available, but I really wish I'd been born a couple years earlier and gotten Josh Goldberg everywhere. I mean, there's actually a verified Joshua Goldberg on Twitter who is not into tech and it's been real annoying. Also, there was a terrorist, Josh Goldberg, down in Florida, but he hasn't been on the news in a while. So I, I've beaten him in the SNL game. Take that, Joshua Ryan Goldberg. Oh, that is funny. And um, Ben did say they built a JavaScript bot for D&D &D, uh, resources a while ago. They also rebuilt in TypeScript. And uh, dang, it feels so much nicer to work in. Yay! Yay! That is, um, is, it's definitely, I, Ben, where is this D and D resources? I feel like I need that in my life because later tonight I will be playing D and D and I'm pretty hilarious at trying to use my character. Um, especially when it comes to knowing what I can make damage with when it's my turn. It's awkward. In, in case anybody wants to stream on that one, it is on uh, Jacob's Jacob's uh, stream. And but really quick, sorry, I'm trying to multitask and I'm putting this in here. <laughs> of ways to connect with Josh and learning TypeScript, and I just want to make sure I had it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, then we will pause until next time. Today's was a quick stream just to set us up so everybody knew what was going on, what the plan is, and get excited for it because I'm excited. And yeah. So Yay. goodbye, everyone. Hit us up when you want to learn more uh, beforehand, and we will be promoting it a lot more as coming up. So see you in two weeks. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming.